Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Hope you guys got your snacks. Hope you guys got your drinks, hot chalky choco or whatever you guys drink, man, because we are about to get a little scary. Now, if you guys are scared, you know, get your blankie. I don't know. Get your teddy bear <laughs> or just click off, you know, because nightmares are real. But we shouldn't get no nightmare. This is not going to be anything that crazy. So if you guys are ready, if you guys are ready for Freddy. Not far from my house with a cornfield on one side and a patch of woods on the other. It was midsummer and like 75 degrees, so I had my convertible top down. I was cruising down the street going like 50 when I heard a loud, blood curdling woman I was scream cruising down on the one street. side of the road, but I couldn't tell which one. I brought the car to a quick halt by slamming on the brakes and listening. There was a woman's cry from the left side in the woods. She was crying for help. I got out of my car and grabbed. You got out of the car and what? See, we already starting off uh, suicidal, bro. You heard the you heard the lady cry from inside the woods, and you got out of the car. Hey, man, you know he might have had. It. Well, let's see. He might have a gun. He might be strapped. But still, man, you're in the dark. You don't know how many people are out there. You can get got. So already we messing up already. Let's see what happens. Grab the baton from my back seat. I walked towards the woods and called. He said back. what? Cry from the left side in the woods. She was crying for help. I got out of my car and grabbed the baton from my back seat. That's not I enough. Walked towards the woods and called back, "Who's out there?" Oh, the woman my immediately gosh. called back, "Please help me." I began to run into the woods, swiping all the twigs and bushes out of my way. I yelled out to the woman to keep screaming so I could find her. She'd every ten seconds or so scream help, and I'd approach in that direction, running, screaming back. But pretty soon. I started to realize no matter how far into the woods I went, the woman's yells didn't seem to get any closer or louder. Bro, don't, duh, you about to get caught, bro, could, like, I mean, this is just, what in the Brady, bro, I don't know where to start from this thing. You're running in the woods. You asked the lady to yell. So you can find her. And she, and she, first of all, like, if she's, if she's in pain or whatever, or if she needs help, why wouldn't she just be yelling help uncontrollably? Like, you know, if somebody's in real danger, right? Wouldn't they be yelling uncontrollably, help, please, ah, ah. like, like, it's, it'll be panic. They're not going to just do it, like, help, and then wait for, like, 10 seconds and be like, help again. No, they're going to be, like, panicking, and if it's real danger, they're going to be un- Uncalm, you know what I mean? They're gonna be, you know, kind of frantic. She is already giving herself away by doing it like at a, I don't know, but I don't know why this guy didn't figure out earlier. Let's go, man. If anything, they were always the same distance, even though I was booking it straight in the direction of the screams. What the heck? I screamed out, Tell me where you are. And about five seconds later, the woman once again screamed out, Help. I stopped in my tracks now. I didn't like this. I started to feel like I was walking into some kind of trap. You are, bro. I turned around and Lord started running back in the direction I came. I ran and ran until I could see the flashing headlights of my car on the side of the road beyond the trees. Oh my god. The whole way back, I still heard the woman's screams, but they were still the same distance no matter how much closer to my car I got. What? As if she were following me back. Oh, fuck. Was I stalked? I got in my car and just drove out of there, completely freaked out. I called 911 to report it to the authorities in case they'd want to investigate it. I wasn't sticking around there though, I was tired. Bro, After telling a few friends and family about the strange encounter, you got lucky. I was ready to move on with my life. But a week later, I saw something on the news that made me sick to my stomach. The dead body of a 30-something year old woman was found in the woods by a man hiking with his dog. Oddly, there were no signs of foul play. The location that the body was reported to have been found was the same general area where I heard the screams. Dang. While that patch of woods is very big, I can't help but feel that would be a huge coincidence. That's crazy, bro. He he got lucky. He got lucky. But you were messing up for even getting out the car at night, going into the woods. Never do that. 
Never do that. Bro. I was driving from Brooklyn to Vermont to my friend John's cabin to have a weekend of Johnny. snowboarding. I had two cars at the time of this story, a 2013 BMW 3 Series and a 2006 Ford F-150, which I was driving on this particular night. I had my snowboarding gear in the bed of the truck. I was about 45 minutes from my buddy's cabin at this point. It was late, like 10 p.m. It was pitch black on these roads and it was snowing. There were like no other cars on the road up there besides me at that hour. I had just gotten my truck back from the mechanic a few weeks ago. I frequently had problems with that truck, and that night was no exception. At perhaps the worst possible time, on the quietest, darkest road, suddenly my engine starts to completely overheat oh, into the red Lord. zone. Whoa. I slow down and pull onto the side. Oh. I wait for it to cool down again. Lord. Wait, how is it heating up? It's, it's cold outside. What kind of car? Oh, he, oh he's riding a Ford F-150? Bro, what kind of car you got? You Bro, this... How is it... But but how, though? How is it getting hot in the cold? Maybe I'm not understanding something. But you would think it wouldn't overheat if it's cold outside, right? Wouldn't that be? I don't know. Let's go. And I slowly got back <clears throat> on the road. But even at a slow speed, the needle went back up to the red. And the engine was overheating again. Bro, throw some ice in there. turn off the truck. I went under the hood to try and diagnose the problem, but I wow. couldn't in the dark in the snow. It's too dark. I had bro. to call John. Johnny. On this road, the reception for T-Mobile was John non-existent. Wick. I couldn't even call for help. In the moment, I felt screwed. I went into the truck to turn it on again and at least wait in the heat of the truck as it idled. It didn't seem to overheat while idling. I tried one more time to drive, but the same thing happened again. So I had to wait like 10 minutes before I saw a car passing. I had my hazards on, and I opened the door and waved my arms. The passing car stopped. It was some little Toyota. The guy rolled his window down, and I thanked him for stopping and asked if I could use his phone. He asked what happened. I told him my truck was overheating and was undrivable. He then asked me if I'm all alone. Ah, the question. That's the question. That's the that's the creepy. That's the red alert, red flag question. Are you are you all alone? God, dog. That's how you know somebody's trying to get you. Are you all alone? <clears throat> like if anybody asks you, are you alone? <clears throat> in a in a in a either isolated place or just anywhere, it don't even matter. Like if they ask you, are you alone, bro? Some some's, something's not going. Some good not going to happen, bro. Some is not gonna happen in your favor, most likely. And he's in the dark and in the snow, and there's no signal and nowhere to go. I paused for a second and said, "Yeah." He reached for his cell phone and handed it to me. He must have been a local because he had bars. Oh, he had I bars. My friend John. He picked up and I asked him what I should do. He told me to call this specific towing company nearby and that he'd come and pick me up. I gave him my exact location, and he said he was going to head over. After that, I called the towing company he gave me and requested assistance. During both phone calls, the guy in his car watched me the whole time. I tried to not look back, though. After my phone calls, I handed the man back his phone and thanked him. He said, you're welcome, and without saying anything else, he rolled up his window and drove down the snowy road into the darkness ahead. Okay. I watched as his taillights disappeared completely All as right. he descended below the top of the hilly road above. I was once again alone. I got back into my idling truck to be in the warmth. <clears throat> I flicked the headlights off for a second just to get an idea of how dark it was out. Lord. And when I say I couldn't see an inch outside the windows, wow. I'm not exaggerating. It was pure blackness. I sat in the truck waiting and waiting. I couldn't even do anything that needed an internet connection. I resorted to playing games on my phone for 20 minutes until there was a bang at my passenger side window. Oh, I jumped shoot. out of my skin as I looked to the window. Yo, I I told them, hey, mom, I spent. Oh, we got to chill with the music. To see, they're always trying to get you. We got to chill. <clears throat> Too dark outside and the headlights didn't really light up the sides of the truck. Oh, Lord. I heard a man's voice start begging for help. He was oh, yelling at me to open boy. the door. He was freezing. I heard him trying to open the door himself, but it was locked. I it's, shied my flashlight to the window, but it it's barely the guy. helped in seeing who was out there. It's the guy, All bro. I saw was someone in a really big black coat with the hood over his head. I yelled back what's wrong, and the mysterious man outside replied saying he's lost and stranded and needs to get out of the cold. 
I didn't trust this. Nah, I bro. sat there nervously trying to figure out what to ask him to prove he's not someone looking to harm me. <laughs> I didn't even figure out what to say before he started aggressively trying to still open the locked door and then started pounding on the glass even harder, still screaming for help. In the heat of the moment, I decided to listen to my gut. I put the truck in drive and he realized this and started pounding harder on the window to break it. I drove the truck onto the road and brought it up to 30 miles per hour despite the damage I was surely doing to the overheating engine. But then I saw something that I didn't expect. The car feel the car that drove away was parked somewhere and 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 dude got out the car and probably like circle back. Stupid, bro. Like my heart skipped a beat. As I came over the hill in the road, I noticed the reflection of taillights approaching me on the side of the road. As I passed the parked car, I realized it was that same Toyota from earlier, the one that the man was driving. I slowed down and lowered the window to see if the man was in the car, but I didn't see anything. It seemed like the car was empty. I looked out the window for a second behind the car, and my taillights lit up footprints in the snow, meaning that man who was banging on my window was him. That was him, he was trying bro. to trick me into opening the door to do who knows what. Bro, he was gonna... driving my truck, knowing full well I was fucking up the engine, but I didn't care at that point. No, 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 you gotta get out of I there. I pulled over a few minutes later when I saw headlights approaching on the other side, and I wanted to cheer in excitement when I realized it was the tow truck. I flashed my lights, and he pulled to the side. As the driver came out, I told him about what just happened. He joked that he got there at the right time. Then he asked if the guy had a gun or anything on him. But I told him I couldn't see. He replied, well then we better do this quick. <laughs> it took him about 15 minutes to get the truck attached. And in that time, the Toyota never passed us. It was possible he turned around and went the other way for this exact reason. I used the tow truck driver's phone to call John again and tell him to just meet us at the body shop. To summarize the rest, John and I still went snowboarding that weekend. And the body shop replaced the broken water pump in my truck causing the overheating. I sold that truck a few weeks later. I'm glad I didn't lower my window or unlock the doors to that man trying to get into my car. In that setting, I could have been murdered and no one would could have, have been. Ever you could have got got. Hey, shouts out to the tow truck guy because he's like, hey, we better hurry this thing up. He's a smart guy. Smart guy. Hey, do 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 do. Bro, you got to get up out of there, bro. The, the tow truck guy, <clears throat> first of all, tow trucking. Is, is already a scary job because you got to go places at night, weird areas, alleys, you know, like that That was a strange place to pick somebody up itself. So he he's he's over there. I'm pretty sure the, the tow, tow truck guy got something on him. Like he he's not strapless. I, I, I would I would assume. But his brain is working. His brain is working, son. <laughs> All right, let's continue. A two men and a truck. Oh, Treats. yo, man, these. <clears throat> I am not. I'm telling you guys, I'm not trying to get striked or demonetized. All right, we are. Oh, the second one. Wow, his ass is hidden. All right. <clears throat> I had my first girlfriend at 17. I lived with my mom at the time because my parents got a divorce when I was 11. One day, ah, I asked my girlfriend on the Sorry to hear that. And she was down. We <clears throat> both had jobs. I worked at a local grocery store, and she worked at a Starbucks. We both worked the day shifts. Oh, she's white. And we were also in our senior year of she's high school. She's white. The reason why I asked her on a date that I'm day just joking. was because it was a Friday. I have no we idea. We barely had any homework. After work, I picked up my girlfriend from her house, and we went to a small restaurant 10 minutes away from my house, because that's all I could afford at the time. We ate, then we went back to her house to spend some time together. By then, it was dark. She complained how our date night was short, and I told her I can't take her anywhere else that had to be paid for. <laughs> we came to an agreement Being that we go on a night drive. We I drove can't pay town, for it! Then we drove on some empty road in the woods. Eventually, the pavement ended, and we were on a dirt road. Hey, huh? I had to pee really bad. Nah. I my girlfriend, and she had to pee as well. We pulled over and got out of my car. Yo. For some reason, right when we got out of the car, we smelt an awful, indescribable smell. I Get back in the car. another person who also pulled over to do their business. My girlfriend actually gagged from the smell. 
I told her that we would pee real quick, then go back in the car to get back into town. There was a little flat area that was the best place to piss at. We did our thing, and then we were on our way back to my car. But on our way back, we heard a noise come from the left side of us. It sounded like a twig snapping. Somebody I watching. it was an animal, so nope. we rushed back to my car. Somebody's watching. Before I had time to open my car door, I heard a scream of fear or pain in the direction my girlfriend and I just pissed at. I told my girlfriend to get in my car while I go investigate. Oh my god, oh, please, please don't try to be the superhero. Oh, I know you got a girlfriend, I know you trying to look tough. Oh my gosh, but this is not a good environment to look tough in. At least beat up a guy that, that wants to, you know, punk you in front of her, at least. This is not, I mean, you don't know what's out there. And you want to go investigate? Do you... Where's your weapon? You don't got one. Ah, my... Begged me not to, but I did it anyway. To make her feel safer, I locked the doors. I went the direction to where we were, and I heard that scream again. For some reason, I lost all of my courage to investigate now that I heard it much closer. But when I heard it, it sounded like from the same direction that my girlfriend and I heard the twig snapping. Instead of going that way, I went on my phone, turned the flash on, then took a picture. Oh! Oh, shoot! <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh, my... It didn't really scare me, but I didn't expect it. Ah, okay, I'll come back. Let's go. Once the flash went off, I saw a man in a white shirt with black stripes, with some blue tarp right in front of him. He was just standing there. I didn't hesitate to dash to the car. I unlocked the doors, got in my car, put it in drive, and floored it. Get my yep. girlfriend kept asking me what happened. She saw I was scared. I told her I would explain later. We got back at the shadier side of town, then drove back to my girlfriend's house. We entered the house and went into her room. That's when I told her I saw the man with a blue tarp in front of him just standing there. I showed her oh, the picture. He was... She was just as creeped out as I was. Oh, that's the picture! We spend the night because we were creeped out. And it was a Friday, and we oh. also had no work or school the next day. That was by far the scariest moment of my life. Oh, shit. We aren't in a relationship anymore. I'm 23, she's 22. But we remain as best friends. Lord. <clears throat> Dang, that's crazy. He was, he was, he was waiting to- Wawa is bringing brisket back and- He was waiting to body bag somebody. He was waiting to body, he was looking for a victim. That's crazy, bro. Oh, that's scary. That's 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 real scary. It was scary. late summer of 2011. What? I was almost 19 and was hanging out with my best friend who was a few years younger than me. We live in a very rural area of southwestern Virginia, about 15 minutes from Mount Airy, North Carolina. Around here, pretty much everything closes by 10 p.m., so you have to find your own ways to pass the time. But that was never a problem for us, as we could always find a way to have fun. The night started out harmless enough. First to the mall, then cruising the streets looking for girls, things any teen guys would be up to. When that proved to be unsuccessful, we just decided to go bowling until they closed. We then went to Main Street a little before midnight, just to walk some of the back alleys, acting like the edgy badasses we thought we were. But we never felt like we were in any danger, as there isn't much violent crime in the area. After we'd walked all the streets, we got bored with this and decided to grab a bite from Waffle House, as this was pretty much Ooh, the Waffle only House. night dining option at the time. Now, I haven't eaten at Waffle House in a long time, but it's a pretty decent place. I'm not going to lie. Pretty decent place. Drop, drop a one down if you have had Waffle House in the past or the present. After we ate and made a quick stop at Walmart, we still weren't ready to go home. So we set out driving around some of the backcountry roads. This was nothing new to us. As I said, around here you have to make your own fun, and late night drives were always our thing. The stretch of road we were now on, I had only driven maybe once before during the day, though it wasn't far from where either of us lived. We just had no reason of going down it. While still in Carolina, the road is paved, but within a mile, it enters back into Virginia and turns into dirt. Like most of the dirt roads around here, the county doesn't really give this one much attention since it's so far out of the way, and there are very few houses on it. Since the road often washes out in the heavy rains, you have to drive much slower, and being as unfamiliar with it as we were, we were now traveling at a crawl. While we were both more cautious now, 
it still just seemed as any other road we would drive. Now at this oh, time shoot. of night, the roads are essentially empty around here, and with only a handful of houses on this road, Random noises, we were certain man. we wouldn't run into any other traffic. The road is mainly all wooded and sits at the bottom of a small mountain. At night, it's easy to overlook any of the houses on it. We probably would have missed them all, if not for out of the corner of our eye, we noticed a light burning. We both looked and noticed a man standing under his porch light. We couldn't make out any features of the man, but we could tell he was watching us, standing completely motionless, with the exception of his head following us. While we were both now on edge, we tried not to think much of it. We figured it was just someone stepping out for a cigarette, but it's nah. just his demeanor that was so uncomforting to us. While nothing came from that man watching us, this was only the beginning. We gradually picked up our speed as we were becoming a little more unnerved the more we talked about it. Within just a few minutes, though, we came to the end of the road, and we were back on the hardtop, a road that I was much more familiar with and that I drove about once a week. We turned right, and we were feeling much better as we could pick up our speed and leave the thoughts of that man behind us. We enjoyed the sights from this road as it travels atop a small mountain ridge, offering beautiful views of the town below. Okay, After okay, a okay. Miles, we had reached the end of this road and made another right to make our way back to my house. This road is a little more wooded than the one we had just turned from, but I was even more familiar with this road as I drove or ridden it literally thousands of times before. Okay, okay. As we're making our way back toward the main highway, we saw something up ahead in the distant reaches of my headlights. Deer are horrendous around here, so we figured that's all it was and slowed down. A big we began deer. to notice it was much wider than the brown fur of a deer. Oh, but okay. we're both used to seeing the occasional albino, so still assume that's <clears throat> all it was. Man. As we got closer, we oh, noticed boy. it was no animal at all. All it right. Was definitely a human, but Whoa. hunched over with their back to us. They were oh. walking in the left lane against traffic, as one is supposed to. I looked back at my friend as he asked, What the hell are they doing walking <laughs> yeah. at this time of night? I looked back towards the person and could finally make out the shape of an older looking woman with long scraggly gray hair, wearing oh my a white t-shirt and white pants. She still had her back turned to us until we were about 50 feet away from her. That's when she turned to us and we got the first look at her face. I don't want to say she was on meth or other drugs, but that's the look she gave off. Deep eye sockets nice. with heavy dark bags under them. She was a zombie. Hair, and very aged skin. Oh, I'm not sure how old scary. she actually was. But if I had to guess, I'd say mid 40s to What late is she doing 50s. outside? But that wasn't the worst of it. She put her hands in the air and started waving them frantically and running towards us. Oh, freak. When she did, oh, no, no, you no, could no, see no. what looked like dried blood all over the front of her shirt and pants, oh. as well as what looked like a big knife in one of her hands. Oh! We weren't sure what she wanted, but that she want to kill you. She badasses was instantly erased. We floored it and didn't let off until we reached What the you highway. mean what she want? We were so kind of bro what kind of question are you at? What do you mean what she want, bro? She running towards you with a knife. What do you... <laughs> like, what? Wait, wait. She, do you think she want to cut you a steak? <laughs> bro, come on, bro. Chad, please. Terrified of the entire ordeal that what would have usually been a five-minute quick drive to my house became a 35-minute detour just on the absurd thought that she could somehow follow us there. In small communities like this, you know pretty much everyone, but neither of us had ever seen this woman before, no, no, nor no. did we ever again. We no. kept a watch on local news for any stories about a bloody woman being picked up, but never heard a thing. I can't even begin to come up with an explanation why she would be walking the backcountry roads at almost four in the morning in her shape and condition, with blood on her clothes and a knife in her hand, She's with a demon, all the risks bro. of human or animal altercation she faced. Fast forward to present day. I now live with my wife on that peaceful road on the mountain ridge oh, Lord. between the two roads of the incident. <clears throat> Dang it. I take the latter one on an almost daily basis and still have seen no sign of that strange woman since. But just earlier this year, there was a huge drug and cockfighting ring busted down the road of the watching man. I don't know if it was the same house or if these people were even living in the area back then. But after all this happened, I've often wondered if that was the same house. And maybe that guy was keeping guard on the place. As for the woman, I just hope I never run into her again. <clears throat> okay, okay, okay. Now, see, see, for me though, it was the video, the video with or or the snow one, the like the the guy that went to the you know that had his car overheating and was in the snow. 
Bro, that one, I knew, bro. I, I knew that that guy probably circled back around. Like, it was an obvious... It, it, it's it's like connecting the dots for me. It, it just, like, what... <laughs> it's just, like, so obvious to me. I called it out. The guy circled back. He did a double take, and he came back around. Just like I said. Just like I guessed. It was just a guess, bro. I didn't know. I didn't watch uh, this video before. I just guessed it. And he did he, he did just that. He drove over the hill, parked it, and then circled back into through the woods. And then came back. Had the big hoodie on and all that crap. That is a, is a, is like a... and Because the thing that gave it to me is like that one question. Are you all alone? You know, that's the question that gave everything away. Like if anybody asks you, are you all alone? I think they might be trying to do some harm to you, man. <clears throat> to me, that th those are red flags. Red flags, red signals, dangerous signals go off in my head. Like, wh what you mean by that? Why you why you want to know if I'm all alone? You know? what? Why does it even matter? You know what I mean? So, that that was obvious to me. That was the out, of the, out of the situation, I would probably say... Man, that's probably got to be one of the scariest ones because his car was damaged, you know. So his car could have died on him as he was trying to get away. Now the guy is still close. He could come back and try to attack. But luckily his car didn't, like, break down on him at that moment. You know, he was able to drive away or whatever. But on the usual cases or on, or on the usual basis, stuff like that, could happen where your car break down so that to me i think that probably was the scariest one because of the possibility of the car breaking down and then you being stranded in the snow and it's pitch black like that's a double that's a double fear so <clears throat> when it comes to that one i think out of all the stories i probably go with that one as the scariest mm -hmm.